Okay, we are rolling again on another little chat. Today is the 14th of December 2021. And I'm speaking to you again from my little writing room once again. That seems to be the, the way that I'm going at the moment. I'll keep the videos going for a bit longer, see if anybody at all wants to uh, watch them in any way, shape or form or on anywhere, as on the website at microcampling.com or... Uh, on YouTube or my Facebook page where I am plunking them all, you know, that same video going up on those places. But primarily it's going to be a speech thing. I'm going to try and keep that going, see about the videos. It's quite a bit of extra work even for a basic video um, like this where you're not doing lots of editing and stuff. So I hope you are all doing well today and all, all keeping, uh, keeping it together as we... Um, we're kind of heading into the really short days before Christmas here, what my mum always used to call the dark days before Christmas. Um, so, you know, only a week away from the shortest day and then the days will slowly get longer, which I shall personally be rather pleased about. You know, I mean, it's it's not like I live in the Arctic Circle or something, but even so, I don't like the short days. Um, at least we have Christmas to look forward to, uh, those of us who are having a bit of a, a bit of fun with Christmas and hopefully... Hopefully, fingers crossed, people will be able to see family and things a bit more this year. So um, I am still just uh, tapping away at the new manuscript, um, which, you know, that's that's the way it is. It's, it's going to take a while to get going. If you're interested in how I put these things together, I have gone back into doing a bit more dictation. Um, mainly using uh, the program Dragon Naturally Speaking. Um, now, I've, I've kind of had a sort of love-hate relationship with it over the years. Um, sometimes I've done it just to save my fingers, really, just to save the joints of my fingers from the endless kind of strain of, of bashing a keyboard. Other times I've done it to try and get stuff going a bit faster. At the moment... Um, I'm just finding it is working out quite well for me. So I do some whilst I am out walking Lottie. I talk into my uh, little dictation machine, my digital recorder, and uh, then the program will transcribe it for me afterwards. And it makes lots of silly mistakes and puts lots of odd words in. Some sometimes are actually quite entertaining um, the things that it thinks I've said. Um, but but I quite I quite like it. It's a um, it's a useful uh, tool in the writer's toolbox these days. And it's the way things are going. Increasingly, speech recognition is being built into all kinds of devices and services and so on. And I think that's a great thing. I mean, I can remember in one of the um, one of the Star Trek movies when um, somebody goes, they, the one where they go back in time to try and save the whales and they go into a factory to try and make... Uh, transparent we'd say aluminium but in in the states they say aluminium don't they and they're going to try and in invent that because it hasn't been invented and uh they sit scotty in front of the computer and he goes computer and when it doesn't do anything they indicate the mouse so he picks up the mouse and puts it in front of his mouth like a microphone and goes computer <laughs> um and you know that was a great joke at the time because speech recognition just just those few short years ago really well, OK, it's quite a few years ago. I hate to think how long ago it was. But uh, certainly in, um, in a lot of our lifetimes, it, it has been a, a joke thing. And now here it is doing all kinds of things. You know, we, we have smart speakers around the house. And we're used to talking to those and we can talk to our phones and all sorts of things. So dictation isn't such a huge stretch. And um, I tend to kind of think in whole sentences as a rule. Um, not always. Sometimes if I'm going fast, I'll kind of get halfway through a sentence and realise that I don't know how to end it in a in a nice way. But that's fine because um, with the, the dictation, you sort of get over the hurdle that it's got to be correct because, of course, it hasn't got to be correct. Once you start thinking it's it can be a scrappy version, it's fine because it's very fast. So the sentence goes wrong. You can say it again and again and again as, as quickly as I'm talking to you now. You can... You can rattle off a new sentence and um, after it's been transcribed, you can just delete the first two or three or whatever versions that were, were no good. So that's kind of where I'm at at the moment. And it does mean that I'm getting through the book a bit, a little bit faster. Um, 
it's it's kind of got to quite a fun stage because, as I've mentioned in some of these earlier chats, there's lots of different threads in this new book. I often have different threads going, but this this one seems particularly complicated, uh, even by my standards. So um, I've kind of known for a while how they're going to come together. And I've got to now do the little tap dance of uh, choreographing these pieces together into an order that that um, will make sense and will be a little bit surprising to the reader, I hope. Although a lot of mystery readers are very clever and they will see things coming. So I've got to try and keep, you know, a few things up my sleeve. But I, I have to make sure that it isn't too contrived and too silly because I think we all... We all hate those stories that seem rather contrived and things are just totally shoehorned in. Um, there's a really famous collection somewhere of rules for mysteries that was put together by some great writers. I think Agatha Christie and I, the names have escaped me at the moment, but there were several writers and they made these little sort of commandments um, about how you mustn't sort of the the culprit can't be a character who's not really in it you know and that they sort of mentioned at the end they all kind of the butler did it sort of thing uh you're not allowed secret passages i think was the other one and twins is the other one they said you mustn't use because all these things were kind of um rather sort of get out of jail free cards you know they're sort of um quick tricks that writers perhaps have been using in mysteries at the time to say, aha, it wasn't me, it was my twin brother. And uh, they're the kind of things that leave the reader feeling cheated. And I think that's important um, that, that we don't do that. So I am just sort of jiggling around with that. And I suspect it won't really come together until the, the first rewrite stage. Because... When the first draft's finished, and as I'm going through the, the rewrite, I'll be thinking and thinking in the back of my mind. A lot of the time, and, and sometimes uh, ideas to fix stories refuse to come while you're sitting there at the keyboard. You know, you're, you're sitting there staring at the thing and um, trying different versions and nothing seems to work. And then other times I'll be getting ready for bed or brushing my teeth or in the shower or, you know, making a cup of tea or something. Walking the dog, of course. Some odd little thing. And it'll suddenly come to me about what the solution is. And I I don't worry about that when I get stuck. I don't worry about it because sometimes they're the greatest opportunities. I mean, it might be a bit stressful at times when you think, oh, no, this is all dreadful. I've made a mess of it. Those times nobody enjoys those, I don't think, which probably most writers get at some point. But um, often they're the they're the good bits it's almost like they're waiting to happen and you think of course this all ties it together and it ties often it, I find I like the things that tie in with some other part of the story and it's almost like I've done it on purpose but I couldn't have done because I had no idea <laughs> you know when I set the seeds that I, I was for something that I was then going to be able to put it together unless it, you know there's some strange subconscious thing going on but I, I don't think so so yeah um Hopefully, um, great ideas will come to me and I will um, I will manage to fit it together because there are several different um, threads that, that I do want to tie together. Uh, unless, you know, when I look at it in the rewrite, I decide that I have to break, break a link or two because that's another thing you can do. I think as long as you handle it carefully and um, I always try to respect a reader's time and if it's a longer book, um that's an investment you know you, you sit down to read a, a longer book and that's that's a few hours of somebody's life we're talking about there to read that book and uh, i want to make sure that i i have respect for that and i think that's that's really kind of a, an important principle um in this sort of current climate it sometimes gets forgotten we get a lot of people putting books out very quickly and I am not going to criticize that in any way because um, I'm kind of all for that sort of democratization of writing and publishing and I'm glad it's open to people and I'm glad it's encouraging people to, to get out there and write and publish um, but for some people I would guess um, it has become a thing purely about say making money on Amazon um, 
and there are people who are putting together books which aren't the best quality um, and that they are, you know, managing to make some money. And you might say, well, look, if, they're, if, they've, if they've got thousands and thousands of readers on Kindle Unlimited, then surely that's great. That's a good book. And I would say that are those readers going to be there for that book in 10 years time? And if the answer is no, because it's some kind of strange subgenre that has cropped up and taken off briefly and lots of people have piled into it and, and churned out stuff in it to sort of hit that tidal wave of, of enthusiasm. Um, and if that's all it is, then, you know, that's not great. And really, people may have made some money short term, but I don't know if they'll have done themselves any favours. So I think there's a balance to be struck. Uh, you know, there's nothing wrong with kind of Pulp Fiction. Pulp Fiction has a long and honourable tradition and uh, certainly lots of people wrote very quickly. So I'm not saying anything against that. You know, there are, um, there are certainly fantastic quick writers. I mean, Dickens was a quick writer who was putting out serialised fiction, you know, and he was writing like crazy because he feared um, the kind of bankruptcy that his father had been through, you know, and he had a hard life. He was he was doing it for the money. But also I fear, feel that he had a, a real respect for his readers and a knowledge of what they wanted to see. And of course, he used his time well and he was a master of his craft, really, and, um, and knew how to tug at someone's heartstrings. So, you know, he had a vast amount of skill which some of which he'd learned, um, I believe, I'm not an expert on his history, but I believe he also had a history in journalism as well, um, which again is that kind of very fast writing done done to a kind of target, to a deadline. And it's the kind of writing that must appeal to people. So I think um, using skills to write quickly is fantastic. And... Um, it's just, uh, I think sometimes the reader is getting a bit forgotten in some of those, um, some of those situations. Put it that way. Not everybody by a long chalk, but that there are some people there cashing in. It's kind of one of the reasons that I want to step away from that. And I'm afraid my books aren't in uh, what's called Kindle Select, which means if you are uh, a subscriber to Kindle Unlimited, and again, you know, no, no criticism of that. Um, you won't be able to find my books there as part of your package. Um, so I try to keep the prices competitive and reasonable, and uh, I think that's that kind of offsets that inconvenience, perhaps. But um, because there's this kind of strange rule, I don't know if you know it, but if if you um, if you are a writer and you want your books to be available to people in Kindle Unlimited, then if you are an independent author, people at Amazon will say to you, aha, that's fine, but you can only publish your book on Amazon and it must not be anywhere else, even on your own website. Um, no more than about 10% of it can you share with anybody else we will throw you out the programme. It's not the same for the traditional publishers that the big publishers they can work out some kind of deal I believe where their books can be included to and available to Kindle Unlimited subscribers and on all the other shops as well but not if you're an independent author Amazon would like to tie you in and say okay we'll reward you for being in this program but you must not put work that you own work that you have created and ought to have control over uh, you cannot put it anywhere else so effectively kind of uh, tying the hands of authors. And I don't think that's a good deal. I don't think it's a good idea. Other subscription services such as Scribd or Scribd, however you want to pronounce it, and uh, Kobo, Kobo Plus it's called, which is available in several countries. They do not do those rules, if you're wondering. So they're not all created equal. So if you want a subscription service that is kind of fair to authors, um, you might want to have a look around and look at Kobo Plus, say. The other great thing, which I think I've mentioned before, is that uh, I want my books to be on libraries. Um, so they're on Overdrive and you can um, ask your local library service to 
purchase a copy of one of my books if you want to borrow it for free that way which is a much more equitable way for more and more people to get access to books without having to you know pay through the nose for them if that situation changes in future it will be a reluctant change for me if i end up having to just go on on amazon only and take my books off kobo and other stores i would be very sad about it um but I can't say it won't ever happen. I am really determined to give a good long go, you know, a, a, at least a year or so of, of being on the other stores and hoping and uh, hoping and hoping and hoping that those readers will come along. So I do try and run some promotions and so on. Speaking of which, if you haven't uh, grabbed Valley of Lies and you wanted to grab Valley of Lies, um, I've just dropped the price. So in US dollars, it used to be four ninety nine, dollars and now it's two ninety nine. dollars um so you know knocked a couple of us dollars off and in the uk i forget how many pounds i think it's like 199 now and maybe it was i don't know i'm not sure i've, I've lost track now and canadian and australian dollars it is i believe 4.99 um just because the value of the currency and is different in different places and yeah i i reduced it across the board so in all the europe uh, zones and so on all the stores so all the google play stores and so on and if you go on google play they've actually thoughtfully put a big banner on telling you when the price dropped and um and when and how by how much which i was quite impressed that they do that automatically somehow seems like a good way to buy ebooks google play i i've bought a few on there it's very handy if you've got an android phone or android tablet uh, or i guess a chromebook would be a good way of doing it as well I haven't got a chromebook quite fancy one but i've got one um or any computer or any tablet you can probably get there i'm not sure about apple tablets i don't know um because i haven't got one of those either so yeah i hope that's kind of some interest to people and if you've gone in and got a study in stone free and then you know at least you see the next book isn't kind of what you might call full price um Although, you know, <laughs> the big publishers will be charging like $15 for an ebook or something, which most indie authors will not do. They'll sort of see $5, $6 as kind of the upper upper limit for most of us, unless it's a big omnibus type edition. So, yeah. Um, yeah, please, please check that out if you fancy it. If you've um, if you've read A Study in Stone and kind of liked it or... You know, even if you're on the fence about it, you will find that a, a Valley of Lies is a much more fully fledged mystery. Because by then I knew that there was a reasonable number of people who liked Dan and Alan and, and would like to read about their adventures. So it is a full length novel, proper mystery. Somebody meets their doom and uh, Dan and Alan must investigate. And there's red herrings and kind of a bit of village life and a bit of a uh, bit of British rural life in there. And sort of some odd clues and red herrings and all kinds of things. Worth a look. I hope you enjoy it if you uh, if you get into it. I don't always read reviews, but um, I, don't, I had a really nice... Um, I haven't got the name in front of me. A really nice email, and I think this person's reviewed as well. And it was wonderful because this person was from the States, but had spent some time um, teaching English, if I'm remembering this correctly. And I always love it when people who kind of know a bit about these things, uh, they notice the difference. I might have mentioned this in a previous chat because I was so pleased about it. And they were saying how much like they'd enjoyed all the sentence structure and everything, which was lovely. Um, I really like that. I mean, you know, as long as people enjoy the story and the characters, um, I think that's that's lovely. I love to get that feedback. The reason I don't look at reviews all that often is because you know a negative one can kind of spoil my day and, and kind of put me off my writing put me off my stroke a bit but so it doesn't happen very often but um you, know, you can't please everybody and that's fine i mean I, i'm reading a book now i'm not really enjoying and i'm plowing through to the end but i'm not going to go and post review of it because i just you know i'm not all that keen on it uh, i almost didn't finish it but i'm i'm going to finish it because i'm almost there now and then i'm going to donate it to a a charity they can you know earn a bit of money out of it um because it's a paperback not an ebook but um yeah it's um 
it's one of those things. So I have had lots of lovely reviews. I will, of course, if you email me or contact me and tell me about a review, I would love to see it. I, I actually really like that because then I get to um, I get to drop you a line and say thank you in a bit more of a personal way. So please, if you've um, if you've reviewed one of my books anywhere, um, just, you know, put me a link in an email. Um, you can um, find me via the website at michaelcampling.com or you can email me uh, mikey at michaelcampling.com. You can reply to any of your newsletters if you're in the Awkward Squad um, newsletter. And um, yeah, I guess you could comment on the YouTube, I guess, or a Facebook. Um, oh, one more thing, because I've rabbited on for about 20 minutes. Um, <coughs> excuse me. It's just dry throat from talking too long, don't worry. No, no dreaded viruses. Um, thank goodness. Uh, a couple of people have requested recently membership of the Awkward Squad Facebook group. Um, and although it's still there, I'm not really doing anything with it. So I don't think I went and approved those people because it seems silly to approve people to something that isn't really active anymore. If you want to get more involved with things, please join the site at michaelcampling.com. And it's free. It's you just need an email address and you will need a proper email address because I do ask you to confirm it. You get an automated email when you sign up. Just you click on the link and bingo, you're in. And then you can sign in and you can comment. You can see all the featured photos and any other extended kind of um, bonus features that are in there. Worth a go, I think, because it only takes a minute to sign up. And uh, it's uh, it's just a way of kind of keeping us all safe in there. Um, you know, nice, positive people who just want to share things about the books or perhaps discuss things or get in touch with me a bit easier. So, yeah, that's all good. And. Yeah, it's nice to have comments and I, I respond to comments on the on the site. But you do have to be a member to comment. And that's instead of the Facebook group, which is um, it's still there just in case we ever want to revive it. But it was there and it was a bit quiet and I, I don't didn't particularly want to keep directing people to Facebook because Facebook has become a giant advertising platform, essentially. And um, I'm not really interested in um, throwing any more money at the Facebook corporation or the meta group, or whatever they want to call themselves now. Who cares? Um, I don't really want to pay them any more money. <laughs> um, and I don't want to have adverts shoved in my face all the time. So. <coughs> just one more quick cough. I can edit these. Mm. I should know by now not to refer to coughs uh, because I'm not going to edit the video, but um, I am. I will quickly cut them out of the podcast feed because nobody wants somebody coughing in their ears. So um, how silly of me. OK, I'll sign off anyway, because my throat's getting a bit dry and tickly from all this yakking. Thank you very much for taking the time to listen and or watch. Comments always welcome um, on the website at michaelcampling.com. You should be able to find me. If you just search for Michael Campling, you'll probably find me, especially if you've got author there. And a huge thank you to all those wonderful people who have supported me at coffee.com sent me a, a mug of coffee or a mug of tea i am still trying to record some thank you videos but um it's taking me a while i don't necessarily do one every day um and there's quite a few people to get through but uh i will try and record those they'll be on instagram unless i think of some other crazy idea i could do them here on these other videos if i got prepared and had a drink with me but i haven't got one <laughs> so i'll just say a huge thank you um, and that's about it. I hope you are going to look after yourselves in the coming week um, as we race towards Christmas. I've kind of done a bit of shopping, got the tree up, got some decorations up, got some lights up in the windows and things. So we're getting there. Lots of cooking, lots of baking to do. Masses of things, but we'll get there. So look after yourselves. Take care and stay safe and uh, happy reading. And I will talk to you again soon. Bye.